Preston Physics Grade 11, Energy Work and Power, Note 8, Thermal Energy and Latent Heat. For this note, there are about six definitions you need, so I would pause it after each definition and copy it down. The first one is thermal energy. Now, thermal energy is the average amount of kinetic energy of all the vibrating particles in a substance. The next definition we're going to look at is heat. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy from one body to another, so something transferring heat to something else. Then we have temperature. Temperature is a measurement of the average amount of thermal energy in a system. So it takes like all of the thermal energy in a room and takes the average amount and gives you a temperature. We're now going to look at heat transfer and we talked about this in grade 9 and 10 a little bit. First thing we have is conduction and then this is when two objects are in contact with each other and they transfer thermal energy like putting your hand on a hot doorknob. The second one we're going to look at is convection. Now this is when a fluid, and a fluid can be either a liquid or a gas, transfers thermal energy from one body to another. So like an oven or a pool heater. Finally we're going to look at radiation. Now radiation is when electromagnetic waves travel from one body to another. So like something like the sun gives off radiation. We have a new formula that we use to calculate the thermal energy of an object. So this is just like when we use our energy kinetic formula or our gravitational energy formula. But instead of calling it E thermal because there's so many different variables for T, in physics, we just use the variable Q, and it's a capital Q for thermal energy. So Q equals mc delta T, where Q is the thermal energy in joules, m is mass, like it always is, and it's measured in kilograms, delta T is the change in temperature in degrees Celsius, but C is called specific heat capacity, and it's in joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. It's something that I will give you for each substance we talk about, or you'll have to calculate, but it's special for each substance, and each substance has its own specific heat capacity. In our first example that we look at, we have a greenhouse and it's changing temperature, and we need to find the thermal energy. So the mass is 24 kilograms. The specific heat capacity is 8.4 times 10 to the 2, joules per kilogram degrees Celsius and we go from 34 to 12 degrees. So we plug in all of our numbers and we end up getting a thermal energy of 4.43 times 10 to the 5 joules. The next thing we're looking at is called latent heat. Now this is the energy required for a substance to change states. As we increase the energy put into a substance the temperature will rise and it'll change states. But there's a spot where we go from a solid to a liquid and then from a liquid to a gas where we're actually putting in energy but we're not increasing the temperature at all. If you look at the diagram we're drawing, we have a solid at the bottom, we put in some energy, the heat rises or the temperature, excuse me, rises. Then at A and B though, we don't actually have any temperature rise but we are increasing the temperature. A is the latent heat of fusion. This is where we go from a solid to a liquid. And B is the latent heat of vaporization, where we go from a liquid to a gas. Now we have a little bit different formula for this thermal energy. We have Q equals ML, where Q is the thermal energy in joules, M is the mass in kilograms, and L is the latent heat. Now we need to be careful because there's a different value for fusion and for vaporization of each substance. So you can't just use one value in both equations. We have to make sure we're either using the fusion latent heat value or the vaporization latent heat value. Let's look at the first example where we're changing 2.5 kilograms of water at 20 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius and making it steam. 
So we know we're going to increase the temperature to a point where we're going to end up at the latent heat value. Now we know this is 100 degrees Celsius because that's when water boils. But we're actually going to have to do now three calculations. We're going to do a calculation going from 20 to 100. Then we're going to do a latent heat calculation. And then we're going to do a calculation going from 100 to 150. So we put in our mass of 2.5 kilograms. Our specific heat of water is 4,184 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And our latent heat of vaporization is 2260 times 10 to the 3 joules per kilogram. So we start plugging our values in and we find that to increase the temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius, which is an 80 degree, degree different, we need 836,800 joules of energy. Then when we find our latent heat changing it from water to steam, we find that we need 5,650,000 joules of energy. Now we need to increase the temperature again from 100 degrees to 150 degrees, and this is a difference of 50 degrees Celsius, we find that we need 523,000 joules of energy. Now the total thermal energy we need for this whole system, well, we have to add all of these together. When we do that, we end up getting 7,009,800 joules of energy. Now the last thing we're going to look at is the transfer of thermal energy. Thermal energy always happens from a warm body to a cold one. Now the example I like to use is when you open up your window, if it's cold outside, the cold air doesn't come in, you actually let the warm air out. It always goes from warm to cold. Another thing we need to look at is the amount of energy lost in one system to another one. It's just a transfer. So if we look at the amount of energy lost in system A, it's going to equal the amount of energy gained in system B. So the negative thermal energy of A is equal to the positive thermal energy of B. And we can sub in all of our values, but just use subscripts and have a negative value for A. What this actually means, though, if we add up the thermal energy in A and the thermal energy in B, we should get zero. Let's look at the first example where we're pouring two cups of water together and trying to determine the final temperature of the whole cup of water once they've been poured together. We have one cup with a mass of 255 grams or 0.255 kilograms at 21.6 degrees Celsius. One cup with mass of 407 grams or 0.407 kilograms at 63.8 degrees Celsius. Now we know both of these systems added together is going to be equal to zero, but we change our delta T to actually T2 minus T1 in both cases. The reason is when we sub in all of our numbers, we actually want to solve for T2, and we know that it's going to be the same value for both of the cups because they're actually being poured together, and we can't have two different temperatures put together as one. So we go through and simplify the equation, getting 1,066.92 T2 minus 23,045.472 plus 1,702.89 T2 minus 108,466.25. We end up then simplifying more to get 2,769.81 T2 equals 131,689.7. So T2's final temperature is 47.5 degrees Celsius. Try the next example on your own and we'll take it up in class tomorrow. The questions associated with this note are 32 to 40 in your yellow duotangs. 